What is secularism? Secularism comes in different shapes. The term secularism, similarly to the term religion, is broad and has many definitions. These definitions relate and have similar roots, but describe different processes. For example, an expert in this question, Dr. Phil Zuckerman, suggests to divide secularism into three main types – political, philosophical, and sociocultural. He describes it as three branches of the same tree. But before I explain each of them, let me say that secularism is a very practical thing. It is not the same as atheism, non-religion or humanism. You can be both secularist and religious person. So this is a common misunderstanding. It is not always about being oppressive of religious people. Here we do not discuss secularization, which is a decline of religious presence and influence in public sphere. Secularization is different from secularism. Both religious and non-religious people can support secularism, especially if you represent religious minority. They often advocate the separation of religion from state because it allows them freedom from discrimination in the multicultural society. If you are a Jew or Hindu in a country with Christian majority, or if you are a Christian in a country with Muslim majority, you more likely would be in favor of secularism, because as a minority you don't want some religious groups to dominate and discriminate against you. We want equal rights for all. Secularism is also a very practical thing. It makes us think whether religious leaders or institutions can take a part in lawmaking process or whether the state should sponsor religious schools. Uh, what will be discrimination policy in our country? When we enter a bakery store or a public mall, uh, what we can and what we cannot do? Uh, can an owner of a business deny you a service due to their religious beliefs? Or if you are a doctor in a public hospital, can you display a religious icon or symbol in your office? For instance, in France, if you are a school bus driver or you work in a public library, you are not allowed to display any religious symbols, even a cross on your chest. So yes, it sets some border lines. But as Andrew Copson explains, it is also a way of having freedom in a diverse society. It's about maximizing freedom for all people and also protecting people of different religious beliefs from discrimination, making sure that everyone is treated equally as a citizen of a diverse society. So now let's start with political type. Secularism can be seen as a political principle that focuses on the separation of religion and state. As a political project or ideology, it may appear differently in various regions of the world in order to address their particular needs. And later, in separate short videos, I will discuss the difference between type of secularism in France, the US, India, Denmark, Turkey and other countries. Ahmed Kuru names two distinct sorts of secularism, depending on the national history and culture of the country where it's been instituted. They are passive and assertive. This means that in some cases a state plays a passive role by tolerating public visibility of religion. But sometimes it requires the state to play an assertive role to exclude religion from the public domain and confine it to private life. For instance, overall, in the US we'll find a passive type of secularism, while in France it will be assertive type. Ahmed Kuru also categorizes countries of the world in four main categories. The first one, religious states, in which the legislation is based on religion and it officially favors one particular religion. For example, Iran, Saudi Arabia or Vatican. There are 12 such countries in total. The next category is those with secular legislation but with an established state religion, such as Greece, Denmark, England. There are 60 such countries in total. Then secular states that do not give preference to any religion, for example the United States, France or Turkey. There are 120 such countries. And finally anti-religious states that are officially hostile to all or many religions, for instance North Korea, China, Cuba. And there are five such countries in total. So in this context, secularism has to do with what place or status religion ought to have in government and civil society. 
Now, let's move on and discuss what Phil Zuckerman calls a philosophical secularism. Here we mean a worldview or an active ideological position based on materialism or naturalism, free from any references to supernatural. People who support such worldview can actively promote anti-religious agenda. They want to debunk religious truth claims, they would often emphasize harm or problems caused by religious thinking or institution, and, no surprise, they often want to see a world free of religion. And finally, we got a social-cultural secularism, which refers to a lifestyle when more and more people demonstrate their indifference to religion in day-to-day -day life. It does not mean being anti-religious, but more as being religiously neutral. It's a phenomenon that captures how religion is losing its authority, not just in public, but also in private life. Fewer people care about religion, attend religious services, or pray before a meal, or observe religious holidays. The culture becomes more secular when we see businesses are open on Sunday, uh, people dress and behave in a secular manner, the music they listen, TV shows and movies they watch does not carry any religious message, or sometimes even make fun of religion, uh, or to fix various problems, people rely more and more on science and technology rather than spiritual devotion and rituals and so on. So those are the three manifestations of secularism, political, philosophical and social-cultural. In short, political secularism is about the separation of church and state. Philosophical secularism refers to a worldview free of superstition that also seeks to debunk religious claims and to reduce influence of religion. And social-cultural secularism is about the process of secularization, when we see how religion is losing its authority in people's day-to-day -day life. At the end, I want to mention that there are scholars, example Talal Asad or Sabah Mahmoud, who are critiquing secularism as a form of Western colonial project that attempts to bring the project of modernization into non-Western world. It also often viewed as a product of Christian or Abrahamic culture, when we see a dichotomy that there is a spiritual realm or a godly realm with religious affairs, and there is a material realm or material world with earthly stuff. But since religion and secular are both considered to be a Western concept that were formed under the influence of Christian theology, in many cultures we won't even find such words or concepts. For some people, even the dichotomy between natural and supernatural, or religious and non-religious, simply does not make any sense. They cannot divide their culture from religion or natural from supernatural. They cannot even imagine such categories or concepts. Because what some people would consider a secular activity, to them would be a religious activity. Therefore, in social sciences, these concepts are used with caution. And the scholarship today is divided on whether secularism is a product of the European Enlightenment or whether it has deeper roots in ancient non-Western world. For example, there are some scholars that would argue that secularism is not a solely modern phenomenon. They would point on how classical India was dealing with their multicultural population or how the ancient world or pre-Christian Europe was organized. In my next videos, I'll discuss secularism as a political principle and how models of secularism vary in different countries. You'll see that the level of religiosity in a given state does not always depend on the model of secularism. Moreover, we must not think that there is a single ideal model of relations between religion and state, which in the future will be followed by all countries of the world. Rather, each country, depending on its historical and cultural heritage, can form its own unique model that would adequately solve current issues between this particular state. Thank you for your attention. If the video was helpful, consider sharing and subscribing.